Hey everybody, welcome back to Kindred Spirits on the Roof. Last time we went through the Anno Extra scenes, and for this episode we're going to go through Nana's Extra scenes. Let's just jump right into it. Our noon broadcast started with the usual title call they even wrote me into, our show that airs on Wednesdays. All this rain really sucks, but my hair gets all frizzy, so this time of year I run a d d double volume special on it. I want the rainy season to be over. You seriously say that every year, and don't stutter. Oh, you wouldn't get it with your silky straight black ha hair, Sasa. All of you who suffer with frizzy hair, remember who stood up for you, okay? Oh, she's trying to get people on her side. What a pain. Mm, well, it's the same sort of opening as usual. Umi always opens up with something random but innocuous. You can count on her for that, I guess. Sasa is always just kind of done with her. At first we were pretty worried about saying, staying, ugh, saying stuff like what a pain and die and whatever on school broadcasts. But she's playing along with Umi's chatting. It works because Umi really is kind of a pain. After Umi and Sasa's first talk segment, we play one song and then go to our correspondence reading corner. We got an unusually good one this time, but I wonder if the two of them could handle it. If they do their job well, I won't have to step in. I might be able to doze a little. Now, on to our correspondence, cor correspondence corner. This week we have an actual request for advice. Who the heck wants advice from us? Hey, don't say that. We're always here to help you guys out. Everybody keep sending us your requests. Yikes, hurry up and read it already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a letter from an anonymous second year. I'm in love with one of my coworkers, and I want to become closer by talking on our breaks and stuff, but I don't know what to talk about. So it says. But love, huh? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, you know, er... Hmm? What's up, you two? Uh, um, so she doesn't know what to talk about with the person she's in love with, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Hmm? What's with the aimless progression here? Uh, um, right, right, then why don't we give a little example? R right I guess so. I'll be the girl in love then, and you're the one I'm interested in, okay, Sasa? Oh, I love this role-playing. This is gonna be delicious. It's gonna go so wrong. It's gonna be amazing. Hmm, they're acting kind of weird. What's with these two? Weren't we really excited when we got this letter last week? We were getting really into creating the content for this corner. Er, er, um, d do you have a moment? Uh, yeah, yeah, what is it? Wait a second, Umi. Why do you sound like a solicitor or something? And you're answering kind of oddly there too, Sasa. Er, um, uh, oh, y your fingers. You have really pretty fingers. Wh what? Uh, y yeah, thanks. So if this is like the rainy season, then this is probably right after, like, not right after because it's the end of the month, but this is, you know, not too much time has passed since the two of them have kind of since both Sasa and Umi have kind of admitted and accepted their feelings for one another. So this is probably a little nerve-wracking, and it's amazing. Well, wait a second, really, you two? Umi, you sound like a weirdo. And what are you doing thanking her, Sasa? Normally you'd cut her down saying die or something, right? What the heck? What is going on? The, they're snow white and so slender. D do you play the piano or something? N no, not really. I I was just born with them. They're still talking about Sasa's fingers, right? What the heck are you two doing? The the they're really pretty. Uh um, can I touch them? What what? Uh okay, sure. What? You're gonna touch them? You're okay with that? Whoa, your skin's so soft. Y you think so? It's just normal, isn't it? Why does Umi need to touch Sasa's fingers all of a sudden? 
What the heck are you doing? Uh, uh, come on, say something, you two. Really, what is with you guys? We were gonna joke around here, right? Why are you holding hands and sighing on an audio-only broadcast? C come on, say something! Crap, they've gone completely silent. Ooh, dead air is never good on the radio. Why the heck are we airing these two holding hands and getting breathy on the noon broadcast? You know, you need, you need video casting at this point. Someone needs to get in there with a video camera and you have video broadcasts and that way you have the visual element for when, you know, Sasa and Umi get too lost in each other to go on. <laughs> I think Sasa was a little against doing this segment and I get that. Even if it's a skit, she was a little nervous about Umi flirting with her. But what is Umi getting like this for when she was coming up with all those jokes in our planning meeting? Huh, wait a second. Could it be? Ah, they're complete goners. Okay, cut. Did that come in handy? Next, we'll play a requested song. I sighed, set the song we had prepared and played it, raising the volume over the mixer, or on the mixer. I cut the volume on their mics at the same time. Okay, three minutes for the song. What the heck was that about, you two? You've got to carry the conversation here. So, sorry, I, I sudden, suddenly got ki kind of excited. U Umi, let go of my hand already. Ah, uh, so sorry. Uh, I, I'm thirsty. What water? Nah. Umi, that's my, mine. Nah, <coughs> so, sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, it's fine. No, seriously, what is with these two? Why is Umi blushing just because she drank some of Sasa's water? Is this like... <laughs> I think I understand why they're acting like this. Sasa must have said it. Last Friday when they went home together. I wonder what Umi's response was. From how they're acting now, I can't imagine it was negative. Umi's gotten really hyper-conscious of Sasa, and Sasa doesn't seem down, but somehow it's like she's acting even weirder than before. Does this mean it went well? Uh, the song's ending soon. You guys had better do the second half right, okay? R right G Got it. Oh, there's more? Oh, yes. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> oh, these two are a mess. Can you guys just pull it together for the second half? I know I kind of encouraged Sasa, but I didn't think they'd lose it like this. God, am I gonna have to deal with these two like this from now on? That sounds awful. I really don't get love at all. What is with this crap? Well, I guess it's fine if it went well, but I'd rather keep out of it as much as possible. Though, these two are my friends after all. This is just great. Song's ending. Okay, talk segment starting. I'm not going to sleep easy just yet, huh? I thought as I raised the volume of their mics. Do we not get to see the second half? No, I wanted to see more <laughs> crazy crash and burning because I bet they didn't hold it together for the second half. I really want to believe they just got kind of like caught up in their own moment again. I'm getting so much better at finding these scenes. Makes me so happy that I'm not spending like a minute trying to find the next extra scene. Ah, uh, it's hot. Standing in front of the main gate in the blazing midsummer sun. This is kind of torture. Well, at least the drum tower provides some shade, so I'm taking refuge there. The summer camp starts today. The broadcasting club is going to be there the whole time to write a radio drama script. Though we're the only ones in the club participating. And by we, I mean Umi and Sasa and me, of course. Well, we're the only ones working on this radio drama after all. If you'd like to know why I'm standing here by the main gate on the first day of the camp. It's 
so hot. Yep. It's because Sasa and I are here waiting for Umi. We were supposed to meet up, but Umi's a little late. Or to be more pre precise, we were supposed to meet up at the station this morning, and Umi never showed. She sent us a text saying she was bringing too many things to the camp and was getting a ride by car instead. What the heck is that girl bringing? Not by choice, Sasa and I headed to school first and are now here waiting for her. Sleep well last night? Yep. I thought it'd be fine to wait in the broadcasting room, but Umi wants us to help her carry all her stuff. And I bet she'd pound if we went to the broadcasting room without her. She'd say something like, we need to start the camp together, the three of us. Yes, because that's what friends do. You guys can never forget that. You all are friends and you do everything together. Except when Sasa and Umi need private time. That, unfortunately, does not involve the three of you. I mean, unless you want it to, but I don't think you do. I, yeah, me going off on a tangent. Ah, uh, how annoying, though. I'm used to that now, of course. Anything interesting happening? Not really. I see. It's hot. Yep. Wait, how many times have we had this exchange? Mm, we're just waiting for whom Umi, so Sasa and I shouldn't need to talk. It wouldn't be that strange for the two of us to just kind of space out while we wait, I'm pretty sure. Sasa and I should both be fine with silence, right? We don't usually have to have these awkward non-conversations. When Umi's here, it's different. She never stops talking, after all. But when it's just Sasa and me like this, it's not that strange that we'd keep quiet, right? Umi's late, huh? Yep. Uh, I bet Sasa's got something she wants to say. She's trying to find the right time to say it. For somebody who says die and annoying and stuff all the time, she never has the courage when it matters. She has a hard time being upfront about things, though. I get that. I guess I'll help her out a little. There's still some time until when Umi said she'd get here, though. Uh, uh, yeah. Now how's that? I mean, there's no need to force yourself. Hey, Nana. Mm hmm? Um, thanks. Oh, she said it. And it was thanks, eh? I wonder what she means by that. Well, I imagine it's an expression of gratitude, just like the word would imply. I doubt I'm wrong about that. I don't think she's the type to be sarcastic at a time like this. Thanks, eh? For what, I wonder? For telling her to go for it when she was trying to confess to Umi? Or for what we talked about before summer vacation started? For both, maybe. Hmm, I don't know what to say. I don't think I really should have been thanked for any of that. I mean... I really couldn't watch Sasa anymore, and clearing up their misunderstanding was good, too. I wasn't really thinking about Umi and Sasa when I said that stuff. I just can't sleep well when something's bothering me. It was so I could sleep better. Does she not get that? Telling me thanks like this. How am I supposed to face you now? Mm, well, don't worry about it. Really, don't. Everything's fine as it was. Mm-hmm. Huh, now Sasa's voice sounds kind of far away. Oh, I bet she can't look at me either. <laughs> Is this what happens to us when Umi's not around? I mean, it's not that bad, but... I hope she shows up soon. It's weird without her here in between us. Yeah, considering Umi was like the one who brought the three together, I wonder how much time like Nana and Sasa have actually spent alone together. So it does not surprise me that they'd have like these kind of this kind of like awkward exchange with one another. Sorry for the wait. There she is. It's Umi. Sorry, I was getting ready and then suddenly it got all crazy. Come on, help me carry this stuff. Ah, oh, jeez, it's the same Umi as always. Wait a second. What even is this stuff? Why do you have two coolers for a week-long camp? Shouldn't you only need to bring, like, a laptop, you know, for writing the script? Here, each of you take one. I'll carry my own stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, you show up late and you make us carry your stuff? Sasa headed over to Umi, grumbling. 
Ah, she's no good either. You complain, but you've got that big dopey smile on your face. <sighs> I followed Sauce over, whispering carefully into her ear. I'll give you two some alone time together, don't worry. Why not try for a kiss? What? Wha? <laughs> she spun around all flustered. Alright, waiting in the heat was worth it since I got to see that face. I think they'll be fine now without me having to worry about them. Yumi and Sasa are dating, but the three of us are also still friends. I think this summer camp will be fun. It'll probably get a little loud, but I'll be happy as long as I can get some good sleep. Good, good. Oh, Nay, Nay, you do care. Stop, stop making excuses. I know you care about their relationship. Way beyond your own, you know, sleep. September, right before the school festival. Huh, so this is where she hangs out. That was my first impression when I found Yuna up on that roof. It was about halfway through lunch. I'd gone up there thinking I might take a little nap before class started, but I was thrown off when it turned out to be hotter than I was expecting. But I didn't really want to go back to the classroom since it's all rowdy before the school festival now. When I was thinking maybe I'd put up with the heat and lie down on a bench in the shade, I noticed Eunice sitting off by herself in the corner. What should I do? Well, if I don't need anything, I guess I don't have to go say hi. Yuna's up here alone after all. I'm sure she doesn't need company. Hmm, but she's alone, right? She's nodding or something every so often. Is she thinking? Hmm, what's that about? It's like she's listening to someone talk. Is that just how Yuna looks when she's thinking? Well, not that I care. Okay, where should I sleep? Oh, Nana-san. Hmm? Oh, she found me. Now she's turned this way. Well, she started it. I walked over to Yuna. Hey, uh... Hey, what's up? Mm, just thinking I'd take a nap before class starts. Oh yeah? Sorry if I interrupted then. Nah, don't worry about it. Is the seat taken? No, go ahead. Yuna said before standing up and leaning against the fence. I guess that means I can sleep there. I was just gonna sit, but... Oh, by the way, leaning against the fence. So... I don't know if this is, this was brought up in the main story, but I remember the very in the very beginning of the of the main story, there's uh, there's a sign or there's some rule about leaning against the fence on the roof of the building, correct? And and it occurred to me the other day that the reason why that sign exists to warn students from leaning on the fence is because of Sachi's accident. And I know that was another building that stood in the place, but I'm sure the school remembers it and is like, we gotta make sure students don't lean on the railing. Was that, was that mentioned when we hear about Sachi's backstory and how she died? I don't remember. And if it was mentioned, I must not remember it being explicitly mentioned, but if it wasn't, then I think that's a pretty cool detail that I didn't even didn't even occur to me until just recently. So I kind of hope that was something that wasn't wasn't explicitly stated because I think that's a nice little subtle touch that doesn't need to be explicitly stated. I think you can pretty pretty easily come to that inference that of course the school would put up signs don't lean against the railing when you know they had a student who like 80 years ago died from falling off the roof. I'll take her up on it if she's offering. So you spend lunch on the roof, Yuna? Huh? Uh, yeah. Hmm, I see. Come to think of it, you weren't in the lo in classroom last year either, were you? N no, I guess not. We weren't really close last year. I doubt we even talked much. 
but she might have left the classroom for lunch every day and come back right when it ended, if I remembered correctly. So she was spending all that time on the roof. It didn't really look like she had any friends other than Anno, so she must have eaten up here every day, alone. So you've never heard our show, have you? Oh, no. Sorry. Don't worry about it. I doubt anyone, anybody up here really wants to hear it anyway. That's not true. It's fine. I find Yuna kind of mysterious. Even after getting close enough to call her a friend, I wouldn't call her a negative person at all. I think she's proactive and good at problem solving. And she's Anno's friend, so she's got to be plenty tolerant of people. Yet she eats alone on the roof for lunch? She doesn't really seem the type. You're not with the Chiki-san and Futano-san today? We ate lunch together. But I was a little sleepy, so I told them I was going up here by myself. It just means I can do that sort of thing now. Not that much has changed, really. I've talked with her a little bit about Sasa. I was surprised to realize that she noticed Sasa's one-sided feelings. I, don't think any I didn't think anyone but me had picked up on them. And she had nothing to do with us back then. How did that happen? I still don't know. Huh, I've actually got the opportunity now. Why don't I ask? Oh, oh, I cannot wait. What will Yuna say? What will Yuna say? How did you know about Sasa? It felt like you were trying to get her together with Umi. Huh? Uh, her... Maybe that was a bit too direct. I suppose it's not an easy question to answer. Well, I don't know, you know, this is your chance to fess up the truth and sound absolutely 100% crazy. Or, you know, you can come up with some lie. Or you could say something totally uninteresting, but I really hope, I'm really hoping for something good here. Yuna, do not disappoint me. Just by chance, I guess. By chance, huh? I should have stuck to one question. Did she just notice by chance, or was she just trying to get them together by chance? Was it all by chance together? Yuna's so mysterious. I'm not sure I'll figure this out just by thinking about it. I can't believe someone would notice without being as close to them as I am. And she was trying to get them together after she noticed? Yuna and Sasa weren't close at all, were they? Or Yuna and Umi? What was in it for her? How did she benefit from them getting together? And even if you set that question aside, they're both women. Would you normally try to help two girls out like that? How would she notice Sasa and why she tried to get them together? I can't figure out either of these questions as they relate to her. So mysterious. I'm sure there's something there, but well, I don't care. It's not like I do something with the information. That information. Oh, oh, Nana, you and Anno need to join forces, <laughs> like join forces and figure what the hell is going on with Yuna, <laughs> because you two have like two pieces of the puzzle, kind of. This this really shows Nana's analytical side too. So that's very cool because we know Nana is pretty good at at um. She's pretty sharp, and she's pretty logical and analytical, so this was cool to see her like go through the questions and the logic and unfortunately not be able to come up to a conclusion with the information she, she has and what's known to her, but that's why you need to talk to Anno, and you two need to f join forces and figure it out. I mean, we know that doesn't happen, but it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. I'd like to see it. Oh, whatever. <sighs> There's no point in thinking any harder about it. It'd be much better to get some sleep. Sorry for asking something so weird. Good night. Ah, uh, sure. Want me to wake you up when the bell rings? Nah, you don't have to. Just leave me be. We were just classmates last year, completely unrelated. I never thought she'd be my friend like this. I didn't know she was this kind of person, either. Yuna is pretty interesting. If she felt like it, I bet she could rope people into way more stuff than Umi. I think she's that proactive, that capable. 
She's a natural leader, but she never shows it unless she needs to. Eating lunch up here by herself and stuff. Well, I'm sure that's a stance she chose for herself. It's not mine to say anything about. Good night. Mm-hmm, night. I don't want to tell her what she should do with her friends, since I don't want anyone telling me, either. That way, we can both respect each other, right? Just kind of ask each other if anything's wrong, right? That's good enough, right? Right. Then I'm going to take a nice nap. Hipsters are so weird, don't you think? Did, did the Japanese have a hipster concept? They, I guess they do, unless that's a totally idiomatic translation that they had to come up with for the English. But I had no idea if Japan, if there was a Japanese version of a, hister, of a hipster, or if there were hipsters in Japan as we know them in Western United States culture. Huh, that's something I'm gonna have to look up after this. Or someone can enlighten me. I, I love when you guys enlighten me on stuff. It's wonderful. Hmm, yeah. Nobody puts effort into something wanting it to be obscure, right? So why would their fans, like, want to limit how many people can enjoy them? Yeah, you're right. Anna's not really into this, huh? We ran into each other in the library during lunch and started a conversation. Hmm, I don't think it's the topic I brought up. We were both talking about this the other day, and she was into it then. Meaning it's gotta be something on Anno's end that's causing her lack of enthusiasm. Come to think of it, she seemed kind of down this whole time. Yeesh, what happened? Is something up, Anno? Huh? Uh, why? Cause you're not really into this. Uh, I went and asked. What am I asking her for? Am I supposed to be worried about her because she seems down or something? Everybody's got different reasons for a lack of enthusiasm. It's just how we are sometimes. It's not like I'm full of energy when I'm on my period. But I guess Anna's been like this for a few days now. Still, you don't have to ask her about it, me. I wonder if some of Umi's worst qualities are rubbing off on me. Uh, mm, a little. I see. A little, hmm. You don't need to elaborate if you don't want to. I won't pry anymore. I guess a friend of mine has been kind of down lately. And it's getting you down too, Hano? How worried are you about this friend? I don't lose any sleep over Umi and Sasa acting weird. Actually, I kind of do, don't I? If Anno's this worried, I can guess who this friend of hers is. I bet it's Yuna. Yuna, eh? So, what's going on here? We're not in the same class, so I don't see her all that often. I saw her before the school festival, but have we talked since then? How was she then? I didn't think there was anything weird about her. It hasn't been that long since I became able to talk to Yuna about Sasa and stuff, and since I got close enough to be able to call her a friend. Anno's definitely been friends with her way longer than I have. And I've been friends with Anna longer than I have with Yuna. We've talked like this a lot more than I've talked with Yuna. Hmm. I think Yuna's more of a stoic. Her type doesn't easily show their own weakness to people. She's not like Umi. Umi's the type to get everyone around her involved in things and liven stuff up. Sasa and I can deal with those bad habits of hers. Yuna's the type to get stressed by the idea of people worrying about her, I think. Those are the type of people who want to lead by example and prove that what they're doing is right. And that means whatever Yuna's dealing with is bad enough that she's worrying Anno. Anno actually worries more about people than you'd expect, but she's always careful not to overstep. The fact that Anno's worrying means that Yuna is a pretty close friend to her. Hmm, this must mean that Yuna is in some pretty big trouble right now. I wonder what it is. 
Of course, it's none of my business. It's nothing I can do anything about either. Ugh, no, this is like the perfect oppor opportunity, Nana, with your analytical skill skills and like matter of fact logic and Anno's ghost scene powers and intuition, you two would make like an awesome detective team. You could both investigate what the hell is going on with Yuna and figure it out. I would have loved I would love to see that. Again, someone write that. Hmm, down, eh? Why? Mm, I don't know. I told her she could tell me anything, but... Uh-huh. Something she can't talk to Anno about, huh? I wonder. Her career plans? Something about her family, maybe? Maybe not. Yuna seems like she wouldn't worry people with stuff she could do something about herself. So it's something she can't do anything about. Or something where she doesn't know what she should do. That sounds likely. Hmm, the most likely thing I can think of is... Romance? <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about that. That's probably the least likely thing. But I wonder. Maybe I'm not completely off the mark here. There's precedent, after all. I'm done. I won't think any more on this. Uh, there I go with my bad habit again. I've got to stop psychoanalyzing people. All this does is tire me out. I'll just end up thinking too hard and losing sleep over it. I'm a little worried about Anno. Yuna, too. But it's nothing I can do anything about. Why would I poke my nose into this? I'll leave them alone. I'm sure they'll be fine. Well, I hope your friend feels better. Mm, me too. You can just tell me about it when you figured it out. Whenever you feel like talking about it. I'll just get some good rest while I wait. Good things come to those who wait, right? I'm not quite sure that's what that phrase means. Oh, that looks like that's it for Nana scenes. All right. Join me next time when we do, I think next time, I'm going to do the Hina scenes. I think that's our next stop. Yes, Hina scenes. Okay, next time, Hina scenes. But I will see you later, and we will get through those together. I'm, I'm super excited, if you couldn't tell. I'm excited about a lot in this game, though, as you all are probably sick of hearing. But anyways, next time, Hina scenes. I will... See y'all later. Take care.